Welcome to Learn with Mr. Lewis. On today's episode, we're looking at events from December 17th to December 23rd. We'll be exploring medical and technological breakthroughs. We'll look at a famous first. We'll learn about an epic sports moment and the death of an icon. On December 17th, 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright make the first ever powered flight. Now, these boys were from Dayton, Ohio, and it's there that they had a successful bicycle business. And it's repairing and building these bicycles that gives them the mechanical skills they need for those future endeavors. They become obsessed with Otto Lilienthal's 1890s um, glider flights in Germany, and they decide to build their own. And with consultation with the U.S. Weather Bureau, they choose the spot, and that is Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. In 1900, they start these glider tests. And then they build a wind tunnel to improve those gliders. And in 1902, they have these uh, further tests with this new and improved glider. And then they build, back in Dayton, a 12 horsepower internal combustion engine with the help of machinist Charles Taylor. And then they're able to make that famous flight. And I highly recommend checking out the exhibit at the National Air and Space Museum. On December 18th, 2022, one of the greatest soccer games in history took place in the World Cup final in Qatar. Now, this World Cup was not without controversy. There were accusations of bribery. There was uh, the exploitation of migrant workers. You had concerns about Qatar sports washing, its human rights abuses. The calendar was weird that this was being played in November and December instead of the usual time in the summer. But the World Cup final was an epic matchup between defending champion France and South American powerhouse Argentina. And it was a chance for Lionel Messi to cement himself as one of the greatest players in history. Uh, Argentina would take a lead and then France would equalize. And then Argentina takes the lead again and then France equalizes and it comes down to an epic shootout at the end. And celebrations like crazy in Argentina and with the Mr. Lewis family as we were in a hotel room watching it with a Zoom call with my wife's Argentine family. On December 19th, 1776, American patriot Thomas Paine publishes his great pamphlet, The American Crisis. Paine was born in Thetford, England, but in 1774, he meets Benjamin Franklin, who urges him to move to Philadelphia. And with Franklin's influence, he's able to get a job with the Pennsylvania Magazine. In January 1776, he publishes his most famous work, Common Sense, which plays a major role in convincing colonists to declare independence. But the second half of 1776 is not great for George Washington. He loses in New York City. He's forced to camp on the Pennsylvania side of the Delaware River. And it's there that Washington has the American crisis read to his troops with great words like, these are the times that try men's souls. And the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. And that triumph was great as Washington's men cross the Delaware and defeat the Hessians at Trent. On December 20th, 1963, for the first time since the construction of the Berlin Wall, 4,000 West Berliners are given one day passes to visit their family members on the other side for the holidays. Uh, a massive crowd lined up to get these passes once East Germany announced that this was a possibility. And family members were able to see each other for the first time in more than two years. Uh, this goes on for about two weeks and it's estimated that hundreds of thousands are given these passes. But let's get some background. Germany and the capital Berlin were divided into occupation zones after World War II, which eventually became East Germany and West Germany. And then the wall was constructed in 1962. At first it's just barbed wire and then it's concrete blocks. And then it's that third generation wall with the infamous death strip until of course it comes down in 1989. On December 21st, 1945, just months after the end of World War II, American General George S. Patton dies from injuries suffered in a tragic car accident. Patton graduated from West Point in 1909. He actually participated in the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm uh, in the modern pentathlon. In World War I, he commands a tank battalion, but it's in World War II that he really makes a name for himself. Commanding the Seventh Army in Sicily, uh, at the forefront of Operation Fortitude before D-Day and commanding the 7th Army most famously in the Battle of the Bulge. 
Now, his death is mourned by many across the world, but nowhere more than Luxembourg, where the Grand Duchess wants him buried in their national cathedral. Instead, he's buried in the Luxembourg American Cemetery, and his grave overlooks those of his men, just as he wanted it. On December 22nd, 1956, Colo, the first ever gorilla born in captivity, is born at the Columbus Zoo in Ohio. Her parents were Mac and Millie, two gorillas that were captured in the wild in Cameroon. Uh, but all of this almost doesn't happen, and this international phenomenon very nearly doesn't take place, if not for the quick thinking of Warren Thomas, a veterinary student. He's the one that discovers that Millie has given birth, but the baby's not breathing, and he works hard and is able to resuscitate little Colo, who goes on to live a long and productive life. A male gorilla, a, a couple of years later, is brought to the zoo. His name is Bongo, and the two of them have three children together. And now the line has continued to where there are even great-grandchildren of Colo that can be found in zoos across the world. Uh, she celebrates her 60th birthday and then dies just a few weeks later. On December 23rd, 1954, medical history is made with the first ever successful organ transplant. This happens at the world famous Brigham Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, where Ronald Herrick, age 23, donates a kidney to his twin brother, Richard Herrick. It's a five and a half hour surgery and it is successful. And the doctor who performs this surgery, Joseph Murray, is actually given the Nobel Prize in 1990 for his efforts in transplantation. Uh, tragically, Richard, the recipient of this, dies eight years later, but from unrelated causes. His brother Ronald lives another 56 years after this transplant, dying in 2010. And of course, this changes everything. The world is a different place because of this. There have been 42,000 successful transplants just in the year 2022 here in the United States, 25,000 of those kidney transplants. Do you wanna see some more of Mr. Lewis? Of course you do, you're addicted. There's a great video here, another great video here, and you can subscribe right here. Do you wanna see some more of Mr. Lewis? Of course you do, you're addicted.